Coaches, welcome back to Football Talk with Coach Chip. Got a really different kind of episode for you today. Really no X's and O's to speak of. It kind of goes back to one I did a couple of years ago when I did the history of the rocket toss or the the uh, fling. If you go back and look at that, I'll I'll uh, link that video up down at the bottom in the in the notes. But this one is on the history of defensive line techniques, where the numbers come from. You know, why do we call a, the inside shoulder of the guard a two-eye? Why do we call the inside shoulder of the tight end a seven? Where did that come from? And some of it I kind of knew a little bit of it, and, you know, just because I'm, I'm old as crap, but a lot of it, I had to go back and look it up, and it all kind of grew out of my wife has been telling me, you know, you need to do a short. Uh, she's a real estate agent, and she went to a workshop, and and she came back and she said, you got to do two QR codes, and you got to do shorts because people want quick stuff. So I decided today, after talking to my good buddy Kenny Simpson, he had done a YouTube short, and he hadn't done a YouTube in a while, and so it kind of it popped up, and I so I hit him up and I said, "Hey, dude, great job on your YouTube short. Uh, check it out. It's a uh, what is a down block." And I know that sounds simple and elementary, but you know there's a lot of young coaches and new coaches and guys coaching rec league. So Kenny did that, and I and I showed my wife, and she said, "See, I told you." And so I decided to make one. I said, "What can I make one on? It's a minute long." And I said, oh, we'll talk about, you know, D-line techniques, one text, two texts, all that stuff. And that's what it started. And I said, hey, I didn't do a history of this. And so that's what we're doing. All right. In the beginning, it was mayhem. Everybody just lined up. Defensive linemen didn't have technique. If Usually, if you were a center, not always, you played center on defense. If you were a guard, you played guard on defense. Everybody just lined up, head up, and it and they just started killing each other. The OL just blocked the, the man head up on them, okay? And that's how it all started. If you go back 100 years, you know, you go back and you look, you're looking at what we would call today a seven diamond. Uh, but they got really, really sophisticated. They'd do a, a six five or a six four one. They were trying to cover up as many people as they could. Well, then these defensive coaches started their low down ways we all know how they are okay and they started playing people on shoulders they put them in gaps well this changes everything for the offense because now you can't say block the man on your head you can't say block the man in front of you which was the extent of o-line blocking rules so o-line coaches or even if they had o-line coaches coaches had to come up with blocking rules so this is where that this is the evolution of the blocking rule came about because defensive coaches got smart, low down rascals that they are, scoundrels even, and started putting people on shoulders and putting people in gaps. Hey, shoot that gap before they can get to you. And so that's where all that's that. And that's where blocking rules came from. Who would have thought blocking rules are uh, linked to defensive line techniques, the numbering techniques. All right, so coaches would say, you know, back in uh, Tommy, line up in the guard tackle gap because they didn't have any other way of doing it. I still remember when I first started playing football, <clears throat> excuse me while I clear my throat, in 1972, our rec league coaches, our peewee coaches, they didn't talk about three ticks and all that kind of stuff. They say, get on the outside shoulder of the guard or get in the guard tackle gap. You know, and I remember when I, when I was coaching middle school ball, a hundred years ago, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, I would say that. And and I knew what the techniques were because I knew the kids did. And then I said, I'm doing them a disservice. They're going to go on to the high school. You know, this is back in the 80s. And so I started uh, teaching them. I'd get them on the board. You know, uh, the first rainy day we had in South Alabama, we had plenty of those in August. I We didn't call practice off. We went inside to teach them what a three tech was and and what a five tech was so they learned the verbiage okay and so line up on the guards outside shoulder you know th th that's not a lot of brevity to that and so that's when coaches started figuring out that's when the gap system came about the a b c d you know the 
the uh, center guard gaps on both sides are A. And I know of my 1,700 subscribers, probably 1,600 of you say, I know this, okay? This is for hopefully some new subscribers. Uh, the center guard gaps on both sides are the A gaps. And then the guard tackle gaps on both sides are the B gaps. And then the guard in, I mean, the tackle in gaps are the C gaps. And anything outside the tight end, in this case, a wing right here, is a D gap. And I usually don't use the term D gap anymore. I just say outside because we don't really use many tight ends anymore, do we? The need for brevity leads to something more succinct. Hey, hey listen here. That's that Troy State University education shining through proud, loud and proud. That's right, y'all. I got I got multiple degrees from the Harvard of the Wiregrass. So the need for brevity, big word, leads to something more succinct. Another big word, even though I can't pronounce it properly. Things like line up on the outside shoulder of the guard just weren't going to cut it anymore. So coaches said, let's figure something out and keep it short. You know, and here's the outside shoulder of the guard. You know, what do they come up with? Well, they came up with a numbering system or something similar to what we use today. Yes, there he is. I know I'm an Alabama guy, born and raised. And I'm an Alabama football fan. Those of y'all that follow that are faithful subscribers. But this is a fact, okay? He is credited with this. Now, what you got to understand, when he won those three titles in the early and mid-60s, uh, he became, I mean, he was already well-known among the coaching community. And when he would go to the American Football Coaches Association, and, and I want to say it was always in New York back in those days, there was some meeting at the end of the season, and I've read all these books on Coach Bryant, where he would go there and he'd always rent a suite and it was one of the really fancy, maybe the Waldorf Astoria or something. And he would hold court. You know, he had his bottle of whiskey, his bottles of whiskey up there and cigars and, and coaches would come through. There's a great chapter in Bo Schimbeckler's book, Bo, that's devoted to the bear. And he talks about the many times he would go visit with him back in the late 60s on through the 70s and visit with him at these coaches associating association meetings in New York and, and great conversations. Uh, by the way, I, re I recommend that book. It's probably 20, 30 years old now. Real hard to remember the title. It's called Bo. And so a lot of coaches and football historians credit the legendary Alabama coach, Coach Bryant, for creating the original numbering system back in the 50s. So right then, when I read that, in my research, I said, okay, he either did it at Alabama, where he came like in the late 50s, at A&M, where he was in the mid-50s, or at Kentucky, where he was in the late 40s and early 50s. So that's where it, where it started, right? No. Technically, well, yeah, that's where it started. But technically, it started at Texas high school, like Nederland or something like that, by this guy. Those of y'all my age are going like, bomb! This is Bum Phillips, okay, who's known more today for coaching Earl Campbell when he was with the Oilers and, of course, all of his great quips. And he's, of course, Wade Phillips' his daddy. I mean, Bum Phillips has some great sayings like, uh, Earl Campbell may not be in a class by himself, but it don't take long to call the roll. And there's a whole bunch. Uh, Google Bum Phillips quotes. There's some great ones. And some of them, you know, other people said and he's credited with it. And some people he said and other people credited with it. But he came up with the idea of numbering D-line techs for brevity. That's Texas high school football, baby. Got to give it credit. <laughs> Excuse me. And, of course, Coach Bryant hired him at A&M. He was on Coach Bryant's staff there. Okay, I do not remember if he was on the uh, Junction Boys staff or he came in later. But he was a Texas high school coach, and he had already started doing that. Now, I don't I couldn't find anything and down the road maybe I can where what his system was like, but it wasn't exactly the same. And so when Coach Bryant, the bear, left, he took the idea with him to Alabama. And that's where he tweaked it. And eventually, because they were the winningest program in college football in the 60s and 70s, winning six titles in that time, the way Coach Bryant did things became standard, became popular. You know, like, and all y'all coaches my age are going to remember this, gassers over and back, over and back, the width of the field. Coach Bryant's 
blamed for coming up with that. I don't know if it's true or not. And um, my high school football coach played for Coach Bryant. So it, a lot of things I was taught in high school, he always said the bear did it. Uh, like the Peter call on a punt, uh, the bingo call on an interception. I don't know that. Probably he didn't come up with any of these things, but he used them. And because he was the most popular coach in the land among coaches, uh, a lot of that stuff uh, he gets credited with, even though he didn't come up with it, he just made it popular and it became the standard thing. And so the numbering system came out of a high school in Texas to College Station, A&M, and then to Tuscaloosa and Alabama. And then, of course, it spread all over creation. All right, now, this is Coach, Bob, Coach Bryant's popular system evolved into something like this, I know, because this is what we used when I was a player in the 70s, and when I started playing high school ball in the mid-70s, and then all the way through into the 90s as a coach. This is the system we used, okay? Head up was a zero, head up the center was a zero, head up the guard was a two, head up the tackle was a four, head up the tight end was a six, which we never used that one. I never played in the defense that used the six technique. Okay, I don't know who ever coached one. Um, and it's the same on both sides. And there you see your A, B, and C gaps. Anything outside the tight end be D. All right, then your, uh, your inside techniques, inside shoulder techniques would be one on the guard, four I on the tackle, and the ever popular and infamous seven. If you got a dude on the D line back in the days in the split four, <laughs> he was the seven. All right, and then of course, the uh, outside shoulder techniques down here at the bottom, we didn't use the one. See, the one was the inside shoulder of the guard Okay, in Coach Bryant's original system. And uh, what did you call when you shaded, when you were on the shoulder of the center? It's a shade. It's strong shade, weak shade, left shade, right shade. I used that. I finally came along. I was kind of in and out of the new way that's being said, which I like better. We'll get into that. Uh, and slowly, about 10 years ago, I finally said, screw it. This is what all the college guys that are coming through here recruiting our kids are saying. And, you know, it's... And it is, a, you know, it makes more sense than the original system. It just so we called them shades, okay, in, a, in the beginning, when I, in the beginning of my career. Now, I do admit, and remember now, I'm a South Alabama guy and a Southern coach. And so everything in my career is going to be tinted that way. You know, it's going to have that Southern flavor. I'm not going to argue with anybody. I mean, I may talk with somebody from Northern California and say, no, it's this. Okay, you know, and, and I, I'm flexible, and I'll remember that when I'm around you, which is, ain't much because I ain't been to Northern California since we got back from Okinawa, Japan in 1969 when we got off that plane in San Francisco. My daddy was in the Army for 22 years. And so that's, that's the way I look at it. So understand, I'm not telling y'all this is the way it is, okay? It's football. There is no it's the way it is. Outside the shape of the football and the measurements of the field, there is no way it is. And you can see right here, three, five, nine. And this is the system that I was weaned on as a player and a coach. Okay, and at some point during the early part of this millennium, it probably started in the 90s, and I wasn't aware of it being stuffed away down here, which is fine. I'm glad I'm stuffed away down here. You know, we've had spring weather here in the middle, early February, all of 2023. Thank you very much. God bless you. At some point during the early part of this millennium, I started hearing and seeing this system, the one you see here on the right of the screen. And I like it. I mean, I, about 10 years ago, this is what I started doing, the one used by most coaches today. And you can see the big difference is you now have two eyes, okay? Which to me makes sense. You got a four eye. I just wonder why we don't call a seven a six eye. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. And then the shades became ones, which makes sense. One, you get in... Get in the left one, right one, strong one, weak one, okay? And then you got your threes, your fives, your nines. And you can see, I'm not going to sit here and go through the whole thing with you. But I love the way this has evolved. It's good. Now, talking about the seven, here you see Coach uh, Paul Johnson, the legendary wishbone coach, finished his career up at Tech, just up the road from us, down here in, in west central Georgia, where I now abide. He said, no one knows why they call it a seven technique, but Coach Bryant numbered it that way, and no one has the guts to change it. 
And it looks like he just told Coach Bowden that right there, and they're having a big laugh. And so, and again, Coach Bryant probably didn't come up with it, but he popularized it. And when he would speak at clinics, and he was the most popular clinic speaker for many years in the 60s, and um, that's the way it became. It's a seven. Inside shoulder of the tight end is a seven, even though it doesn't make numerical sense. Don't tell anybody that's an Alabama fan that I said that. All right. Speaking of Alabama and Coach Bowden on the previous slide, Mickey Andrews, legendary Florida State defensive coordinator, is an Alabama graduate, played for Coach Bryant's first two title teams, and I was blessed to spend 10 years of my life coaching in his hometown of Ozark, Alabama, and coaching at his alma mater, Carroll High School. And I went to church with his parents, Cecil and Ennis Andrews. And I got to meet Coach Andrews and got to be friendly. Well, I wouldn't say we were friends. I got to be friendly. I would go down and visit. I went down to Florida State to some camps and clinics because of Coach Andrews. Now, there's Coach Andrews right there. I don't know who that is on the left. Okay, but that's Coach Andrews. And uh, Coach Andrews, we had him come speak at a clinic we put on in Ozark. And when he was talking, and I was talking about three techs and four techs, as I'm trying to, here I was 30-something years old, I'm trying to impress Mickey Andrews. And he is a coach. He said, listen, you know, he said, I played for Coach Bryant, and he's the one that pretty much came up with the system. He goes, and when I'm talking to coaches and when I'm speaking at clinics, I say outside shoulder and inside shoulder and head up. He said, because I just don't want to get into it. anybody. It's not something worth arguing over. You know, you remember watching him coach in the 80s and 90s, he was pretty fiery. But off the field, he was as mellow as they come and cool as a moose in December. Now, I'm going to tell you, I love Coach Andrews. And that's the way he looked at it. And uh, that kind of had a big impact on me. And uh, did he have a way of doing it? Yeah, he did it Coach Bryant's way. Because again, he was, I, I think I think he was an All-American, but he was all-conference DB in the early 60s at University of Alabama. All right, then here's a really funny way of doing it. Hugh Nall, who was the OL coach for Tuberville uh, at Auburn, when I would go up there and, and do camps when I was coaching um, in South Alabama, and just drive up the road to Auburn because it was just an easy drive and it was and they knew how to took, take care of high school coaches. Here's what Hugh Nall told me. He said, you know, when they come into me, my whole line, they all come from different high school backgrounds, different coaches. And he said, and this is like 2006, 7, 8 is the three summers that I spent there right toward the end of Tuberville's run. And he said, so I just have my own system. I don't be on the sideline, he said, and I'm talking to a sophomore and he's telling me about a three tech or whatever, or two I, you know, and and all, and we're on different different verbiage, or the guy in the press box. And this wasn't what the defense did at Auburn. This is remember now you got nobody going both ways in college. This was Coach Nall's offensive line rooms language. It was and it was just like it was zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Nine was head up the tight end. Six was head up the tackle. Three was head up the guard. Zero was head up the nose. It just went in order. There's no two eyes, no four eyes. Okay, and that way that everybody. And when they came in as freshmen, he taught them that. And so for their run, their three, four, five years at Auburn, this was how they addressed it. Okay. Now, what do you call it? What is the system you use? I'm curious, okay? Please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already doing so. Come on, guys, this is my retirement plan, dude. Help a brother out. You can hit me up you can, at siegel.chip at gmail.com. Comment down below in the comment section. On Twitter, I'm at Chip Siegel. Facebook, I've got a football talk with Coach Chip Page. I'll respond to any questions and comments because I want to help you and your team succeed. Okay. Until next time, hey, y'all, be elite.